Hey y'all, hey. How are you? Hi. Come on in the house. Come on in here. Come on in here. Come on in here. I need you to come in so that I know if y'all can hear me or not. Since we're at the workplace and uh, <clears throat> hopefully you all have had a wonderful day. Today is Wednesday. August the 2nd and I'm just gonna tell you I'm excited about August because it's my birth month so I'm celebrating all month so yay happy birth month to me and to all the August babies hopefully again you've had a glorious day it is hump day Wednesday we're halfway through the work week thank God for that my name is Minister Shonda Tucker and I am honored to be the executive pastor of Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. It's been a minute since I've done Bible study. So as I was um, inquiring of the Lord about all of this, I was kind of nervous and anxious. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm an OG. I got this. <laughs> I got this. But it was still just a little, little bit of nerves because it's been a while since I've done... Um, uh, Bible study, but I will let you know um, there is a word from the Lord. So how about that? Um, our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton, are away at the Believers Southwest Believers Conference Convention Conference in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. So keep them in your prayers. I always give honor to them because I thank God for the anointing that's on their life and the opportunity to sit um, under their leadership and to just be able to do ministry with them. I think a lot of people don't really appreciate their pastors, but um, yeah. They, they carry a lot and, and they stand in the gap. The word says that they keep watch over our souls. So I always want to take the time to give honor to them. I love them and I thank God for them. also want to give honor to our overseer, Pastor Cesar Roland Richburg, and the entire first family, the Richburg family, and also to Mother Blanton. And then, because it's very rare that you guys get to see me without he whom my soul loveth, my amazing husband, Minister Ali. Tucker. I give honor to him. Babe, I love you and I thank God for you. I called him right before I was about to go live and I said, pray for me. He said, about tonight or just in general? I said, about everything. And and that brother went in. So I bless God for a praying husband. I bless God for who he is and I bless God for saving him and keeping him and sparing his life so that he could become my husband. I am thankful that I get to do life with him. And I give honor to all my co-laborers in Christ, my fellow pastors, my fellow OGs specifically, because we are taking over the month of August. All of the OGs, the original glory carriers, we're the first group that was... Um, um, that was ordained as ministers um, through pers through Pursuit. Uh, we were ordained through Joan Hunter Ministries, but Pursuit sponsored us and sent us down there. But uh, Minister uh, Tomasa Easley, who is the prophet of the house, Minister Kimberly Martin, who is the spiritual mother of the house, Minister Gianna Hansen, soon to be Darnell in Jesus' name, um, who is pastor's handmaiden and me. We're taking over uh, uh, August today. To do Bible study. So super excited, super honored that I get to um, just serve the people of God with them. So I think that's all of my formalities out of the way. There is a word from the Lord. I promise you, you're not watching this by accident or by coincidence. So if something um, from the word moves you or meets you right where you are put amen in the comments share put a heart um let somebody know that can let somebody know that the word is going forward because guess what the word whenever you receive it i believe it's right for you in your season sometimes you can just be flipping through and find something and be like wow just that little snippet blessed me and so actually i we're going to pray first, and then I'm going to tell you how the Lord dropped this, this message on me. Okay, let's pray. 
Father, we absolutely love you. We adore you. We worship you, God, before we ask you for anything. We just want to thank you for everything. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for this opportunity, God, just to pause, to worship you, to honor you, and to bless your holy name. As the psalmist David declares, if we had 10,000 tongues, we could not praise you enough. So with the one that we have, we are determined to bless your name and to speak well of you. Thank you because you are a good God. You have been better to us than we've been to ourselves. So we thank you for this opportunity to come boldly before your throne that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. God, sit me down and you stand up. Put an anointing on my mouth and on my mind and on my thoughts, God, that makes teaching and preaching easy so that your word reaches everyone exactly where they need to be met. And not just them, God, but me also. Let these words penetrate my heart and mind so that I am not just a hearer of the word, but a doer also. God, bless your people exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. And your credit is good with us. We give you praise in advance. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, so yesterday I had some amazing girlfriends who were at my home and we were lightweight watching uh, T.D. Jakes in the background. We weren't really watching it, watching it, but we, he, we had him on in the background and we were talking. And so when they left, I continued watching him and there was um, the ordination. It wasn't really an ordination. It was more like a passing of the torch. Um, I think at the most recent Woman Thou Art Loose, where Bishop T.D. Jakes announced that he was passing the Woman Thou Art Loose um, conference over to his youngest daughter, Sarah Jakes Roberts. And there was this passionate expression from him. And he said, I'm not just giving you this because of your bloodline, because you are my child. I am giving this to you because of the anointing that's on your life. And then he paused for a moment and just began to speak over all the women in the room and said, I am giving you a father's blessing. And he just began to decree a blessing over all the women in the room who had never heard their father say, um, well done, I'm proud of you, great job. He just began to minister to the women in the room and to give them a father's anointing. And it blew my mind. I was in tears. I was like, this is so powerful because not only is he speaking to his own daughter, but he took the time to minister to the women that were in the room. And so the Lord just began to sit with me about that. And he took me to the story of the prodigal son. And I'm going to read it for you really quickly. I believe that you're already familiar with it, but I promise you we're going somewhere with it. So we're going to read it from Luke, the 15th chapter, the 11th through the 32nd verse. Again, Luke 15, 11 through 32. Let me just move it to the other side since I'm so used to <laughs> reading it from here. Okay. And the word of God declares, then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger son said to his father, give me now the part of the property that I am supposed to receive someday. So the father divided his wealth between his two sons. A few days later, the younger son gathered up all that he had left. He traveled far away to another country and there he wasted his money living like a fool. After he spent everything he had, there was a terrible famine throughout the country. He was hungry and needed money. So he went and got a job with one of the people who lived there. The man sent him into the field to feed pigs. He was so hungry that he wanted to eat the food the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. The son realized that he had been very foolish. He thought, all of my father's hired workers have plenty of food, but here I am almost dead because I have nothing to eat. I will leave and go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against God and have done wrong to you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, but let me be like one of the hired workers. So he left and he went to his father. While the son was still a long way off, his father saw him coming and felt sorry for him. He ran to him and hugged him and kissed him. And the father, the son said, Father, 
I have sinned against God and have done wrong to you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, hurry, bring the best clothes and put them on him. Also put a ring on his finger and good sandals on his feet and bring our best calf and kill it so that we can celebrate with plenty to eat. My son was dead, but now he is alive again. He was lost, but he is found. So they began to have a party. The oldest son had been out in the field. When he came near the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. So he called to one of the servant boys and asked, what does all this mean? The boy said, your brother has come back and your father killed the best calf to eat. He is happy because he has his son back safe and sound. The oldest son was angry and would not go into the party. So his father went out and begged him to come in. But he said to his father, look, for all these years, I've worked like a slave for you. I've always done what you told me to do. And you never even gave me a young goat for a party with my friends. But then this son of yours comes home after wasting your money on prostitutes and you kill the best calf for him. He said to him, Oh, my son, you are always with me and everything that I have is yours. But this was a day to be happy and celebrate. Your brother was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he's found. All right, meaty passage of scripture, Luke 15, 11 through 32. And so the Lord said to me that we're going to call this Bible study, Go Home. All right, go home. So when I began to think about this and to really sit with the Lord about it, he began to talk to me and I want, and, and the revelation that he was giving me, I was thinking, oh, this should be called the father's love. And he was like, nope. Because what he was giving me was from the father's perspective. I have read this story many times, heard it taught, heard it preached over and over again. But the revelation that the Lord was giving me for this passage of scripture was to take the father's position in studying it. And so I thought, wow, that's a great father. Let's talk about the father's love. And he said, no, 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 not so quick, my daughter. He said, the problem is whenever you say father, whenever people refer to God as the father, what people do is attach how they feel about their earthly father to the heavenly father. Okay, so so he said to me, let me repeat that, what people do whenever we say God our Father or our Father in heaven, because of our minds and how we, we connect the dots, so to speak, sometimes we attach the attributes of our earthly father to our heavenly father. So he said, you've got to teach them about what a father's love is. And if you title it that, they, they, some of them won't even listen. Some of you even now are beginning to think about your earthly father, whether he was present or not present, whether he was good or not so good, whether you knew his name or never met him before in your life. The way we feel about our father is a complicated thing. So the Lord began to speak to me and he was like, some people have really great fathers, still have really great earthly fathers. Some people had no father, have no frame of reference, were raised by women, didn't have a man in the house or anywhere close by. Some had father figures, some uncles, some cousins, grandpa, some, some, some godly men who just stood in the gap as a father figure. So when you see all of these surrogate fathers, you can see why uh, when we refer to God the Father, sometimes it's complicated. And, and for some, if your father has gone home to be with the Lord, it is it is a touchy subject because for women a lot of times we're daddy's girls so when your father is no longer present on earth it, it, it makes you feel uncovered and so the Lord began to talk to me and in and, and and I think I've mentioned to a couple of you or several of you that that we've been my husband and I have been going through training to be 
become marriage counselors. And so there is a term called a father wound. And what it refers to is damage that's done when a person has an absent or abusive father. Again, a father wound is damage that's done when a person has an absent or abusive father. In today's modern English, when a girl is not raised by her father, sometimes she's referred to as having daddy issues. So the men that she chooses um, are more like father figures than, than, than uh, an actual potential spouse or a mate. And so even in the spirit world, even in religious thought, there is a spiritual father wound that refers to experiencing grief or lost, yearning to be loved, can create a spiritual father wound. I'm still going somewhere. I'm still talking about the story of the prodigal son. In this story, if I take it from the father's perspective, he has two sons, two sons that are completely different. One son that, that wants all of his money up front. He, he goes out, he lives wild, he, ha he runs into trouble, uh, he takes any old kind of job, he's about to be on Skid Row. Um, he remembers that his father has helped, so he's like, well, I'm going to go ask my father, can I work for him? I'm already out here as low as I can go, I'm about to starve to death. So my father's workers are taken care of good. So let me just go back, let me go in low on my belly and, and, and apologize and maybe he'll let me work for him and and then he's got the good son or the, the the son that stayed home never really gave him any trouble he worked um and did everything that his father asked him to do but he had a little bit of an attitude uh-huh he was a little bit jealous of his brother because he left him there with all the work he was a little bit uh envious of of, of life because he felt like everybody was kicking it and he was working hard at the family business and so he's a little bit bitter and a little bit resentful and so he, he he's not even a fan of his own brother he got got a few issues going on again both of the father's children but completely different but when we stop and look at this father what do we know about him we know that he is a provider the the son comes to him and says uh i, I won't have my inheritance now in order to have an inheritance, the father had to have some stuff, right? In order for the son to stay back and work at the family business, the father had to be doing pretty well. So we know that he was a good provider. Not only that, when the son gets out into the world and the world gets hard, he says, my father's got some hired help that's living good. So we know that the father is a good provider. We also know that he loved his boy. Um, he gives them whatever they want. When the son comes to him and says, hey, get divided up. I want my stuff now. He, he says, okay, but let's do that. We don't hear any pushback. We don't hear any resistance. The son who stays at home, the, the father says to him, you've had access to everything that I have. All that I have is yours. So, so he loves his boys and cares for them. He's very generous. The boys didn't have to beg him for anything. He just, when he saw his son coming home, he's like, go get this, go get this, go get this, because I want to show out for my son. I want to celebrate him. And so he's very generous. He's loyal. He's looking for his son. Um, the word of God says that he saw his son afar off. Mm -hmm. He saw his son at a distance and was ready for him. He had to be looking for him in order to see him way across the field coming. And so he was loyal and always looking for his son, even though his son was gone. And he was very forgiving. When his son came to him and said, Dad, I'm not even worthy to be your son, but just keep me as one of your higher 
would have help. He didn't even address that. He started talking to his, his servant saying, go get this, go get this, go get this. We're going to celebrate this thing. He doesn't even address what the son is trying to say. He's like, I know who you are and I still call you my son. I began to look at that. I began to look at the father wound and I began to look at the traits of this father. The symptoms of having a father wound, you may have some or you may know someone who has some, but let's just unpack that for a little bit. If you have a father wound, uh, it, it could be because your father didn't have time for you. Okay. Uh, it could be that you felt scared of your father. He was in the home, but he was a tyrant. Um, your father withheld love or food or money as punishment. If you showed out, he wouldn't hug you. He wouldn't talk to you. Go to bed with no dinner or whatever. He, he, he was a, 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 a stern person. Your father was physically or emotionally absent. Um, I know, um, some people who said they never heard their father say that they loved them or or things like that so they were emotionally absent they were present in the home but emotionally absent or maybe he was just never there he just never lived there um the father was highly critical of you you could do no right everything was wrong or the father had painfully high expectations of you those things create a father wound. But on the other hand, we have this father who we have described as being a provider, who loved his children, who was generous, loyal, and forgiving. When we think of God the Father, sometimes we think about him in terms of a father wound, uh, that he doesn't have time for me. He's the father of the whole Yetedeboshaya. He's the father of the whole universe, so how could he have time for me? He, he is the father who, who, who sees all and knows all. He's Alpha and Omega, so why would he care about me and my situation? Uh, we sometimes, we are scared of the father because because people taught us that, that that God is sitting in heaven with a baseball bat waiting to whack you for anything that you do wrong so we're we're scared because because we read in the scripture that he's terrible that that his anger is is in his wrath is is fierce and so we're scared and trembling because of that God the father or maybe we're worried because uh we think he's withheld uh love or food, or, or, or just um, money, because he's punishing us, because we, we didn't go to church enough, so my, I can't pay my bills. Um, um, we don't have everything that we want because I haven't been good enough. Mm -hmm. That's uh, some of the attributes that we attach to God the Father, or we think that he's highly critical of us. He expects us to be Sally, super saint. He expects us to be at church every time the doors open. He expects us to come early and stay late. He expects us to always have a prayer on our lips and a praise in our heart. He expects us never to sin, never to fail, never to fall short of our calling. So we place him in the position of being highly critical of us or he's not there. Uh, I hear y'all talk about God the Father, but I haven't seen him. He doesn't answer my prayers. I don't hear from him. So, so he's absent. Those are father wounds that we attach to God the Father. That's how we know we don't have a good relationship with him. But once you realize that God is not mad at you, our pastor says sometimes God is in a good mood when it comes to you. I, 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 when I go home, uh, sometimes my father has been home, been uh, gone home to be with the Lord double digit years, uh, 13, 14, 15 years. When I go home, I, I often um, feel like I am a celebrity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not because they roll out the red carpet, but because my mom um, makes a big deal about it. She wants to know, what, what time are you going to be in town? What time are you coming over here? I got some chicken salad in the refrigerator or just things that she knows that I like because of me coming home. And so those attributes of going home mean that there's someone excited about your presence. When you think about God the Father, know that he has the attributes of the Father in this passage of scripture. Again, Luke 
15, 11 through 32. When we look at that father, he's a provider. The word declares that he is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He loves his children. The word says that he so loved us that he did not even spare his only son, but sent him to pay a debt that he did not owe so that we could forever be the righteousness of God mm -hmm. uh, so that we could be in right standing. He's generous. He didn't keep back his son, but he sent his son to save us. That's generous. So now when he looks at us, all he sees is what his son did for us. He loves us. He's loyal. Even when we're not loyal to him, God, our father, is loyal. Uh, the word says that his ear is inclined unto us. He's concerned about what concerns us. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. He is always available to us. The word says that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. Our God is loyal to us and he's forgiving. Mm. Anybody know anything about forgiveness? He is a forgiving God. He loved us when we didn't love ourselves. He loved us when we didn't love him and didn't even acknowledge us. Uh, and before we ask, he's ready to forgive. The word says that he will cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. And for his own sake, he will not remember our sins anymore. Not that he will forget them, but he won't remember them anymore. It won't come up again. So when you bring it up and you pray it back to him, Lord, I'm sorry about what I did in the fifth grade. He's like, what? are you talking about because it's done it's over we keep bringing it up he's never bringing it to us he is a forgiving god i, I was listening uh to this thing and i was thinking about the fact that good fathers are often taken for granted when there is a good father, um, they are on their post and doing what they need to be doing. And I was listening to this this comedian. Uh, I'm not going to say his name because he's rather old and has had a... <laughs> had a very sordid life. But many, many years ago, he told a joke about a good father would help his son and teach him football. And even when he's two or three, he would toss the little soft football around with him. And then as he got older, he would teach him how to tackle. And as he went into teen years and he got big and strong, he would send him to the high school to be on the football team and just run over people. And, and, and then maybe he would make it to the, to the college level and have thousands of people cheering for him and be on national TV and score a touchdown and turn around and look at the camera and say, hi, mom. Never even mention his father. But so sometimes good fathers get overlooked. And we have a good father. We have a father who sits high and who looks low, who is ever present, who's always watching us, who's always fighting battles for us. We have a good father that sometimes, the truth be told, we take for granted. In this study, which which one do you relate to? Are you the buck wild child who who wants your stuff right now and then you want to get out and live how you live and then when you mess up, you want to be like, I'm sorry, God, I didn't mean it. Or you're the, or are you the child who's the Lord owes you something. I'm here serving you. I'm here doing what you said. Do you say preach this Bible study? So I, I'm doing what you said. You said pray for those who despitefully use me. I'm doing that. I'm at church. I'm paying my tithe. I'm paying my offerings. Where my holy hook up at? Mm. So we get focused on what we want from God and not that the fact that he's gracious, the fact that we still have breath in our body, life in our body, health and strength, that we're able to go about our day, that we're able to live in one of the most prosperous nations in the world. We, we sometimes get distracted by what we want from God and we go to him like we have a grocery list, like it's Burger King and we want to have it our way. 
So, so, so often when we read the story, we're hard on the prodigal son because he wasted everything and because, because he lived how he wanted to live and then he went back home begging. But a lot of times we do that. We want to live how we want to live and do what we want to do and then we want to come back. Uh, we have a, a running joke at, at church about being disobedient, about I heard him but I didn't want to do that. We, we do that because there's some things that God asks of us that we, it doesn't really feel good to our flesh. So we're like, Lord, you want me to do what? What does that have to do with what I'm asking you for instead of just being obedient? The Lord gave me a term several years ago called recklessly obedient. It, 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 the way he broke it down to me, it meant from the moment I heard his voice telling me to do something to the time that I began to move my feet. I wanted that time to lessen. I don't want to get into a big debate with him about why I couldn't and why I shouldn't and why I wouldn't. From the moment he said do it, I wanted to be moving my feet in the direction of doing it. I wanted to be recklessly obedient to him. It is still my heart's desire. Sometimes I get it right, sometimes not so much because the things that he asks of me often are greater than my ability to see. So I've got to trust him because he tells me that there, there is a cost in that hesitation from the time that we hear him say do something to the time that we move, that, that, that we need to shorten that time span and be recklessly obedient. And so I, I'm not, I promise you I'm about to wrap this up, but what I wanted to really, really share with you is the importance of having God as the father, not as the father, your earthly father, who could have been amazing or maybe might not have been. No matter what that relationship relationship is like or was like ask the lord to reveal what type of father mm, ask him to reveal what type of father he needs to be in your life this morning as i was driving into work and i was listening to a sermon at one point the minister said my father loves me and he had discovered, the minister had discovered um, at that point in time that God loved him as much as he loved Jesus Christ. And so he couldn't understand that. He said, God loves me as much as he loves Jesus Christ who lives there with him. How? Because God sees him in you, on you the sacrifice that he gave. So I began to say that as I was, actually I was praying for one of my friends and the Lord began to say that. And so I thought I was declaring it over her, but it began to minister to me. So, so as I give you a couple of points in just a few seconds, I'm gonna be done. But I want you wherever you are to say, my father, loves me if you can put it in the chat for me my father loves me I need you to say it out loud not in your mind I, I need you to say it slowly because sometimes we say our father God the father but but I need you to make it personal my that's ownership father that is the great one the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the, the overseer of all things. My father loves, not like the world loves, not like man loves, not even how you love, but his love is everlasting. My father loves me. Me and my mess. Me when I don't act right. Me when I got an attitude. Me when I'm disobedient. Me when I'm... Um, high as a kite, me when I'm low and crawling on my belly, me when I'm, I'm doing what he told me to do, and me when I'm acting like I don't even hear his voice. My father loves me. I need you to say it. 
I need you to say it until you can feel it like a garment encamped around you. My father loves me, not my earthly father, not the father figures that have been in my life, but my father loves me has always loved me, has always been concerned about me, is is working all things together for my good, is answering my prayers, is arranging things in my favor, is moving heaven and earth to make sure that his child is taken care of. That there are some things that God wants to do in your life, but he wants to do it from a place of a father's love. And in order to do that, We've got to know my father loves me. I I saw something one time that said, um, if God had a wallet, your picture would be in it. If he had a mantle, your picture would be over it. And in his heart is a picture of you. My father loves me. If you don't remember anything else I said, when when all hell is breaking loose in your life and then you're wondering, does anybody care? Be reminded that my father loves me. I need you to make it personal. That's why I'm not saying your or our, because I've got to make it personal. As you're driving to work in the morning, my father loves me. When you go to bed at night and you've had a rough day, my father loves me. When you're wondering where the money's coming from and and if you're ever going to be in a healthy relationship and if if things are ever going to work out, my father loves me. God is going to use those words to minister to you. In the month of August, August is described... um, or described by me uh, because it is the eighth month. Eighth is the biblical number of new beginnings. This is a new beginning for you because the Lord doesn't want to just be Lord. He wants to operate in your life as father. And my father loves me. I want you to make it your business to stay connected to the father. I know, I hear you. EP, I already got a relationship with the Lord. I I pray every day. I pay my tithes. I do all of that. But we want a relationship with our Father. Not just uh, paying our tithes like we're paying our bill. But we want to do it as a sacrifice of worship. We want to wake up in the morning and just sing praises to him, not because we want something from him, but just because he's already blessed us by allowing us to see another day. So we're going to work on our relationship with our father. First, we're going to stop all compromise. Okay, how we're going to work on our relationship with our father is number one, we're going to stop all compromise compromise. We're going to refuse to allow the things of the world, material possessions, career positions, sinful pursuits, ungodly relationships, or social standing to eat away at our time with God. We're going to get his word into our hearts so deeply that no one else's opinion is important. Again, we're going to stop all compromise meaning we're going to refuse to allow the things of the world material possessions career positions sinful pursuits ungodly relationships or social standing to eat away at our time with our god we're going to get his word into our hearts so deeply that no one else's opinion is important the scripture reference for that is Matthew 6 33 seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these things will be added we're going to put him back in first place no more compromise the second thing that we're going to do is pray 
-hmm. not not the big eloquent prayers but uh, I say this all the time when I call my mom I don't say hello Cynthia this is your youngest child Shonda Denise Tucker and and I wanted to call you to introduce myself no sometimes I just say hey mom hey sometimes I just say what you doing sometimes I say hey Beulah because that's my nickname for her because she knows me and so our relationship is such that we stay in constant communication so prayer is constant communication with your father prayer it's time to talk directly to god mm. instead of relying on anyone else to tell you what god wants for your life Start a direct conversation with him. Tell him what's on your mind. Tell him your concerns. Ask for what you need and even for what you want. Pray for the needs of others and believe that what you ask will be answered. Matthew 21 and 22. Okay? Start a direct conversation with the Lord. You're wearing your prayer partner out. What did the Lord tell you? Tell me. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with asking for agreement, but agreement means you've already talked to him. So you want me to agree with what you heard or agree that you're hearing correctly, but you got to initiate this conversation. So first, we're going to stop our compromise. Second, we're going to pray. And third, we're going to accept his love. Mm. John 14, 21 says, whoever really loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love him and will show myself to him. You don't have to be shy about your relationship with the father. You can be confident of God's love for you and his desire to bless you. Be confident in God's love for you accepted he wants to shower you with blessings he wants to shower you with favor he wants to be the lover of your soul and so again if you remember nothing else that i say my father loves me i um am a member of or i'm a partner with kcm ministries and every month they send us these little cards and so i just take them out and keep them at my desk at work and the one this month says faith hope and love love springs from god who is so good and so i saw that and i was like hmm, that's pretty cool and the lord said read the back the back says god loves me again my father loves me so those words jumped off the page but it says god loves me and his tender mercies are over me the blood of jesus his precious son was shed for me when i come to him in faith which works by love who lives in me he uses his power to save heal and deliver me my father loves me that's it that's all I got for you today. I need you to abide in his love. God wants to do some amazing things in your life, but the fact that we've not been able to get over the hurdle of our earthly father has limited and tied his hands. So we're going to pray really quickly and I'm gonna let you get back to your day. But before we go into prayer, one more time, if you can say it out loud wherever you are, my father loves me let's pray so father father thank you for the revelation that you love us in spite of us you love us teach us oh god what your love looks like feels like teach us how to love the way that you love first corinthians 13 describes love but god help us to live out your love help us to live in a way that honors you and that blesses your name help us to be recipients of your love to freely receive your love so that we can freely give it thank you for being a father who loves us thank you for teaching us about a father's love thank you for allowing us to be your children the truth is we've all been the prodigal son truth is we've all been the good son who stayed home but we want to be children who walk worthy of the calling 
of being your child. God, heal every father wound that is within us. Help us to forgive everyone of everything. Loose offense from us, God. Loose hatred and unforgiving away from us so that we are ready recipients of your love. God, have your way in every area of our lives. Continue to unpack the meaning of my father loves me. God, heal every hurt and heart. Heal us, God, from the inside out so that we show your love. Help us to be better, stronger, and wiser in every area of our life. Thank you for being our Father. We absolutely love you. We adore you. We praise you. And we worship you. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Listen, God bless you as you go throughout your evening. I just want you to see. Sit in that for a moment and really ask the Lord to reveal to you what that phrase means. My father loves me. I absolutely love you with the love of Christ. Again, I give honor to my amazing senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. I give honor to my amazing husband, Minister Al Lee Tucker. I give honor to our overseer, Pastor Cesar Roland Richburg, the entire first family, the Richburg family, also to Mother Blanton, to my co-laborers in Christ, to my OGs who are taking over Bible study for August, to my Pursuit for His Presence family, and to each of you. Listen, if you're looking for an opportunity to sow, if that word hit you and met you right where you are, so into it so that that father wound can be healed. Some some people have fathers who who their results um, was, was abusive and hurtful and painful. And God says, I want to take all of that away. And so just so into that so that God can can begin to unpack that. So where you want to grow. And again, we, we are not desiring um, your money, but we want fruit that may abound on, on your account. So the information about sewing is on the screen we absolutely love you listen join us on friday at scarrett bennett center here in nashville tennessee at seven o'clock p.m we're going to be praying over the educators praying over the administration and praying over our children so that they have an awesome school year because children in tennessee are headed back to school uh some started this week and, and most of davidson county will start i believe next week so we want the opportunity just to pray over your children we have have some some things for them some supplies some some things that we just want to love on them we want to pray over our teachers and pray over the administrators of the school and just pray that everyone has a blessed and successful school year also our pastor is doing a healing series if you know someone who needs healing or that's you you need healing um Tuesday nights at 6.30 is the healing session that she's teaching. And Wednesday, every Wednesday in the month of August, we're going to have Bible study by the OG's original glory carriers. We're taking over for the kingdom of God. Listen, we absolutely love you. Be blessed. Thank you for the opportunity just to unpack this. I, I promise you it was ministering to me as I was trying to share it with you. Because whenever I say it, I feel the presence of the Lord. My father loves me. Whew. It'll, it'll bless you if you let it. Listen, I love you with the love of Christ. Y'all have an amazing night and I will talk to you soon. Be blessed.